hello dear friends welcome to my youtube channel mukesh english in this video we are going to analyze we are going to summarize a famous play the fire in the rain written by the famous playwright grish kannad let's know about the playwright grish kannad was born on 19th may 1938 and passed away on 10th june 2019 he was an indian actor film director kannada writer and playwright and a gyanapeetha awardee who predominantly worked in the south indian cinema and bollywood if there was one playwright who captured the essence of indian mythology while still paving a way for a new tomorrow it would be grish kannad his works represents the ideas indulged in the themes of philosophy and politics his writing always urges the readers to the readers to question to think to perceive to draw one's own conclusion his best plays are yayati tughlaq nagamandala hayavandana boiled beans and obviously the most important the fire and the rain the play fire and the rain is a far reaching creation of grish kannad the play was originally written in kannada the language which kannad chooses to write most often it was written in the year 1995 and was published in english in the year 1998 by kannad himself the play was since then staged in kannada hindi bengali and in english in india and even abroad it was adopted into movie in the year 2002 it is wholesome and involves all kinds of human feelings such as love compassion lust hatred revenge respect deceit etc grish kannad is extremely considerate about two things firstly as his plays are much related to the history and traditions of india so kannad skillfully portrays indianness throughout his plays secondly though he deals with the myths and the traditions he takes utmost care not to falsify the facts grish kannad's fire in the rain is a sixth effective play which depends on fanciful scenes from mahabharata the play was initially written in kannada as agni matto male deciphered as the fire in the rain in english grish kannad is the ace of utilizing antiquated legend into his plays he skillfully determines old fantasy and with essential changes he uses them into his plays to give the contemporary soul in a similar custom this play by grish kannad depends on the legend of yavakri yagna and indra which happens in the mahabharata grish kannad utilizes the play inside the play strategy in the fire and the rain the play is about homicide envy fire and political he attempts to look at human instinct by making certain characters in the play characters in the play rabia and bhardwaj they are the great brahmins to compete to become the chief in the fire sacrifice rabia he is the father of parvasu parvasu rabia's elder son arvasu is rabia's younger son vishaka she is parvasu's wife andaka he is the blind shudra sage who guards the hermitage of bhardwaj yavakri who is the son of bhardwaj nitilai she is a tribe girl arvasu is in love with nitilai in this play grish kannad skillfully exploits the myth of yavakri and that of indra vrata to focus on the negative and the positive impulses of the human beings the immoral qualities of the priestly class and how they dominate and exploit the lower class people the play also highlights the innocent pure and natural world of the lower caste the story of aravasu and nitilai which begins as a subplot grows in significance and towards a climax takes center stage the fire and the rain is divided into three acts along with prologue and epilogue the central action of the play focuses on the motive of revenge futility of false knowledge and the feebleness of a human nature the play fire in the rain is based on the myth of yavakri 
extracted from the chapters 135 to 138 of the Vana Parva, the forest canto of the Mahabharata. According to the myth, Yavakri, a sage who had attained universal knowledge from Indra, he has a burning desire to revenge on his uncle Raibhya's family. Yavakri, Yavakri's father Bhardwaj and Raibhya, they were brothers. They were equally learned, but Raibhya was getting more recognition among the two. This was a cause for the anger getting hoarded inside Yavakri. How he satiates himself and what are the consequences he faces contribute to be the sources for the play. The genius playwright has added the flavor of rage to the play and beautified the plot further. The play Fire in the Rain opens with a prologue divided into three acts and ends with an epilogue wherein preparation for a yagna to provoke the rain god is going on. The ritual is in the final stage and the chief priest for the seven-year-long yagna is Paravasu, the elder son of Rebhya. Meanwhile, an actor-manager of a drama troupe comes, uh, comes asking for the permission to enact a play. He says, it would further satisfy the Lord Indra and brings rain to the land which has been suffering drought from the past ten years. On hearing this, Parvasu gives them permission to perform. Arvasu is one of the artists in the play. Arvasu is the, is the younger brother of Parvasu. The play within the play begins with the scene of Arvasu talking to his lady love, Nitalai, a tribal girl. Arvasu is Brahmin by birth, but he is fond of acting. Dancing and acting are considered as low caste activities and Brahmins are forbidden for doing them. Their conversation is about Arvasu being ready to give up his high birth for the sake of his art and love. According to the tribal custom of Nitalai's village, Arvasu had to proclaim in front of the village heads that he is a man enough to satisfy a girl. They had arranged a council, they had arranged a meeting and Arvasu was supposed to meet the village heads before the sunset that evening. During their conversation, both of them they meet Andaka, the blind Shudra sage who guards the hermitage of Bhardwaj. Through Andaka, they come to know that Yavakri, the son of Bhardwaj, is back in town after attaining universal knowledge through a rigorous tapasya of 10 years. Now Yavakri has come back to take revenge on Raibhya because Yavakri's father did not get recognition like Raibhya. During this meeting, Intralai asked two questions. She would like to know the two important questions to Yavakri. Whether Yavakri can make it rain, whether he knows when he would die. By the noon time, Arvasu remembers that Yavakri had asked him to meet him when the sun is above the head. Meanwhile, near Rebhya's hermitage, Yavakri encounters Vishakha, who is returning home after fetching water. She had been his lady love, whom he had abandoned ten years ago. Vishaka is now married to Parvasu. Yavakri tries to rekindle their love. Vishaka initially resists, but later she gives in. The reason for Vishaka budging is that she was unwillingly married to Parvasu. Their, their married life was good for about a year. But after that, Parvasu totally shunned her and started concentrating on gaining spiritual power, spiritual wisdom. Later, Parvasu got an invitation to be the chief priest of the Yagna for which he left home and had not returned for seven years. After they quenched their thirst for words, Vishaka and Yavakri further move into the bushes to quench their physical thirst. Arvasu and Nitalai reach the place exactly at the same time and see the two of them physically involved. Vishaka runs homewards while Arvasu comes the pot, while Arvasu carries the pot of water and follows her. To their surprise, Raibhya is back home on knowing about the incident. 
Rebhya, through his meditation, he invokes Kritya and sends a Brahma Rakshasa to kill Yavakri. The only way for Yavakri to safeguard himself is by staying inside his father's hermitage, Vishaka and Arvasu. They run into two different directions to save the life of Yavakri. Arvasu runs towards the hermitage and conveys the message to Andaka and moves on to meet Nitlai's father. Vishaka finds Yavakri near the banyan tree and pleads him, requests him to run away into the hermitage. And this time, Yavakri reveals that all these were plant events by him. Yavakri told that he wanted to revenge on Rebya's family for grabbing away all the honors due to his father. It was this reason that he had taken up the rigorous tapasya and now he is already with consecrated water in his kamandlu, which he can burn the Brahma Rakshasa into ashes. Yavakri even reveals to Vishaka that he he, ha, he was the one who called back Rabhya home earlier and also asked Arvasu to come exactly at that time. So everything happened in favor of him so far. So it was a plan by Yavakri to kill Rabhya and to take revenge on behalf of his father. On hearing that Yavakri had used her true love as an instrument to his revenge, Vishaka pours out the consecrated water and the Rakshasa is almost near. Yavakri now runs towards the hermitage, but the blind Andaka does not recognize his footsteps. While he catches him on that gate, the Rakshasa kills Yavakri. On the other hand, at Nitalai's village, Arvasu is very late and her marriage is arranged with a boy of her community. Disappointed, he returns home and to the surprise, Barvasu comes home after seven years. So here, the Act 1 ends with the death of Yaukari, as well as Arvasu's failure attempt to meet the tribal's council or the tribal's meeting, where he fails to meet the meeting. Uh, and what happens? Nitalai's marriage gets fixed. At the same time, we find here one more U-turn or one more change here. Parvasu comes home after seven years. The news of Vishaka going astray was the reason for the return of Parvasu after seven years. On hearing that, Rebhya was jealous of his own son for grabbing the post of the chief priest. And also, Rebhya had been physically and sexually harassing Vishaka over the years. Parvasu shoots his arrow and kills his own father. He instructs Arvasu to do the last rites for the father and then come to the palace where the puja was almost in the final stage. When Arvasu goes to the yagna, Parvasu cunningly puts the blame of the father's, of the father's murder on Arvasu. The villagers hit Arvasu very badly and he faints. On gaining consciousness, Arvasu learns that the actor manager and his troops saved his life and Italai had left her husband and comes to take care of Arvasu. The actor manager and Arvasu decide to reveal the truth to everyone by staging these incidents as a drama. They chose the story of Lord Indra betraying his brothers Vishurupa and Vrita. Arvasu takes the character of Vrita. According to the plot of the play, Indra is the son of Brahma, born in the Brahmin lineage. His brother Vishwarupa was born in the Kshatriya lineage and Vrita belongs to the demonic lineage. Indra is jealous of his brothers, so he, he plans to kill Vishwarupa. So he invites him to ritual in the name of the father and asks Vrita not to enter the altar as he is a, he's a Rakshas. During the fire sacrifice, Indra pushes Vishwarupa into the fire and kills him. On seeing this scene being enacted, Paravasu gets a self-realization of the fatal sin which he has committed. Moreover, the Brahma Rakshasa invoked by his father is also conversing with him, asking for liberation. On knowing the truth about Paravasu, the Rakshasa understands that he cannot grant him salvation. Paravasu, at the peak of his realization, calmly walks into the fire without revealing the truth to the mass. 
Meanwhile, as the drama is being enacted, the mask worn by Arvasu has taken control over him and Arvasu starting to burn the stage. There is much tension and stampede among the crowd. The guards are trying to stop him, but in vain. Nitalai runs and pulls off the mask. With a sense of defeat that the death of his brother was not in his favor because he was unable to prove his innocence, Arvasu and Nitalai start to move off. At the same time, Nitalai's brother and husband come and they, they kill Nitalai and Nitalai is no more. Arvasu, who is in total defeat, now walks into the fire carrying Nitalai's dead body. The fire extinguishes and the Lord Indra appears in front of them. He grants Arvasu a wish of whatever he asks for. The crowd cries suggesting him to ask for rain but Arvasu asks for the life of Nitalai. Indra gives him the realization that if the wheel of the time rolls back, all the dead would come back to life. Yavakri, Raibhya, Parvasu and all the people dead. This would end up in a retelecast of the tragedy again. Arvasu finally asks for the liberation of the Brahma Rakshasa, which would have been the wish of Nitalai too. Indra grants his wish and this act of humanity brings rain to the kingdom. With this, the play ends. Dear friends, in the play Fire and the Rain, Grish Kannad has succeeded in projecting harsh realities of modern civilization, which is characterized by stress, strain, confusion, frustration, loneliness, disintegration, and meaninglessness. While depicting the drawbacks and vices of both an individual and society, Grish Kannad's humanitarian approach and his commitment to human values are clearly perceptible. Although the theme of revenge, hatred, violence pervades the entire atmosphere, the play marks the triumph of goodness over evil. That's why the play ends in rain. Dear friends, thank you so much for watching this video. You can reach me at mukeshenglish at the rate of gmail.com. Please do subscribe the channel. Click on the like button for more videos on literature, workbook, pronunciation, grammar, communication skills, presentation skills, interview skills. Stay in tune with Mukesh English. Thank you once again.